Thanks for clicking. The federal government has endorsed some major relief for homeowners who have run into trouble as a result of rising interest rates. While the 2023 budget mentioned a plan for the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, the FCAC, to develop a guideline for the banks to extend amortizations, we now have the proposed guidelines and, if they come to fruition, could represent a major bailout for Canadian homeowners and for the banks as well. Oh, f you. We've talked before on this channel about banks extending amortizations for those with variable rate mortgages and fixed payments, and how that was just kicking the can down the road. But that may no longer be the case if these proposals come to fruition. So what I want to do today is go over the proposed guidelines coming from the FCAC, take a look at how these proposals could affect the course of Canada's real estate correction, and then discuss what to look for next. It is the end of the month, so we are eagerly awaiting the release of March's real estate data, which should start to trickle out from the local boards early next week. We'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into these guidelines. Onto the guidelines. First off, just a brief background. Many holders of variable rate mortgages have fixed payments. So as prime rises, as the Bank of Canada raises their interest rates, the total percentage of their payment that goes towards their principal decreases and the amount that goes towards interest increases. So when prime rises, the borrower's payment stays the same. The only change is the amount that goes towards interest rises and the amount that goes towards principal decreases. However, with prime rising by 425 basis points over the past year, many borrowers have hit their trigger point, the point at which their fixed payment no longer is enough to cover their interest. And when that happens, many of the banks have been allowing borrowers to add the difference onto the balance of their mortgage. This is negative amortization. If you don't have it, it gets tacked onto the principal. So, very briefly, let's say you bought an average price home in London at the peak of the market for $823,000 and a rate of prime minus 1.05. With a rate of 1.4% in minimum down payment requirements, you had a fixed mortgage rate payment of $3,146. However, the prime rate has risen since you purchased that home. The prime when you purchased was 2.45 and now it's sitting at 6.7%. Now, the interest only payment due per month is $3,760. That's nearly $600 more than the fixed payment currently being paid. And what the banks have been doing is allowing borrowers to add that $600 difference, the difference in the payment that they're not making, and add that on to the total amount of the loan add that on to the total amount owing. So the principal amount of these mortgages have been increasing, and we call it kicking the can down the road as it's going to be a problem at renewal, at least it was. At renewal, when that mortgage goes from say 25 years down to 20 years, the total amount owed on that home has to be paid off within that 20 years. So when that mortgage snaps back to its original amortization, when it goes from say 25 years to 20 years on the date of renewal, that payment is set to increase and increase substantially. If we look at the example we just talked about with that $823,000 purchase amount, and we look at a 20 year amortization at 5.65, that payment bump goes up to $5,516. And obviously there are going to be some gradations of this as that 823K purchase price, some of it was paid off during that five year term and interest rates weren't at 5.65 that whole time. However, you get the idea. More and more is tacked onto the principal, and then when that amortization snaps back to its original amortization, goes from 25 years to 20 years, the payment is set to increase and increase by a lot. Until now at least, as the FCAC has developed a guideline on existing consumer mortgage loans in exceptional circumstances. And by exceptional circumstances, the FCAC means those households that have high household debt, have seen rapid interest rate hikes, and have a higher cost of living. High household debt, high inflation, and high interest rates to deal with that high inflation. Right now, under existing rules, there is no method for homeowners to extend their amortization beyond refinancing their home. However, under the proposed guidelines, lenders would have to consider whether or not the borrower would have the ability to return to the original amortization at the end of their term. And if the bank deems that borrowers would have a problem making their payments if their amortization snaps back to that original, say, 20 years, if it deems that borrowers would not be able to make those payments, then it can consider permanently increasing their amortization period. However, it's not clear for how long the FCAC is saying that the banks can re-amortize these mortgages. Currently, under existing standards, the maximum amortization, at least for A lenders, is 30 years. However, when the Global Mail contacted the FCAC to see how long of amortization periods were being considered, the FCAC did not comment. Whatever you think is best. 
So, under the proposed guidelines, those with variable rate mortgages and fixed payments may be allowed to permanently extend their amortizations without having to refinance, without having to requalify. However, it's not just those borrowers that are being considered. Those with fixed rate mortgages that are coming up for renewal are also set to be considered for an increase in their amortizations. Currently, the way it stands right now for fixed rate mortgages and for variable rate mortgages for that matter, when borrowers go to renew their mortgage, if they want to extend their amortization, they have to requalify. They have to requalify on the stress test and they have to requalify on the home's value. And the mortgage amount cannot exceed 80% of that home's value. However, at least from the proposed changes being offered by the FCAC, it doesn't look like borrowers are going to have to requalify at renewal if these changes come to fruition. Further, in addition to proposing that the banks extend amortizations without having the borrowers requalify for both variable and fixed rate mortgages. They are also proposing that banks not take advantage of their consumers when extending these amortizations, when extending these relief measures. Then this is my bread and butter. The proposal insists that the bank should provide competitive interest rates for those seeking an increase in their amortization period. They cannot charge interest on the interest that is unpaid. I'm sure the banks will love that. And ensure that credit scores are not affected by those who seek relief measures. So in summary, under these guidelines, the banks would have to offer permanent amortization increases for distressed borrowers, for borrowers facing exceptional circumstances, high household debt, inflation, and higher interest rates. And this would be for variable and fixed rate mortgage holders. The banks would not be able to charge a premium for these relief measures and credit scores are not to be impacted. It's election year. Now granted, these are just proposed measures and consultations will be open until May 5th. However, these measures could very well serve to reprop up the housing market. I knew you'd come. If borrowers don't have to requalify in order to extend their amortization, if they don't have to requalify at renewal in order to change the terms of their mortgage, then we could see some of that anticipatory selling that was very much predicted, both on this channel and elsewhere. We could see a lot of that anticipatory selling not come to fruition. We could see a lot of those homes, a lot of those homeowners that were going to eventually see this payment stress not have to sell their home. If they can simply extend their amortization, maybe to 30 years, who knows how long the FCAC hasn't said and would not comment, if they can just continue to extend their amortization, then that payment stress very well might not come to fruition, might not come to bear, and therefore we wouldn't see a whole lot of anticipatory selling. Now, the extent to which all of these proposals will make it into the guidelines is not yet clear, and we still have OSFI set to release their new rules for the banks coming out in April, and it's not clear as of yet how those will mesh with the current guidelines. As even with these extended amortizations, they are still allowing the banks to keep troubled assets on their books, something which I'm not sure as of yet that OSFI is going to be very happy with. With that said, we will continue to have updates out on these proposals as well as those coming out from OSFI on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.